How's it going, everybody? It's time for a little throwback. I just got back from a visit to the Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville battlefields in Virginia. I uh, made some videos for my other channel, Vlogging Through History, which if you haven't already checked it out, there's a link in the description below that'll take you over there. That's all my non-gaming historical content. And probably by the time most of you see this video, it will have passed this channel in total subscribers. But Fredericksburg, I want to talk a little bit about that because uh, I've been playing a lot of Grand Tactician the Civil War, but Grand Tactician does not have the historic battle of Fredericksburg. Uh, as an available playable battle. So we're going back to Ultimate General Civil War, the, the game that brought many of you to this channel in the first place. It's time to dive back into it. We're going to play the Battle of Fredericksburg. And what I want to do is I want to basically follow the Union strategy as it really existed in this battle with one notable exception. I want to correct the issues that took place on the Union left flank. And that is where the battle, I believe, was lost because they didn't attack with everything they should have attacked with. But we'll get to that. We're going to go ahead and dive in, and we'll talk about the historic battle. Uh, now that I've been to the battlefield and I've walked the places where these things happened, I've got a little bit more perspective on it. So it's an opportunity not only to play a game that many of us know and love, but also to talk about the battle itself. Uh, so let's talk about how this all got started okay before we even get anywhere stafford heights which overlooks uh the town of fredericksburg uh the union had as many as 220 guns up here at one point but the plan had always been uh burnside's plan was to get across fredericksburg and get between uh, get across the rappahannock Re river and into fredericksburg and get between lee's army and richmond before lee even knew that he was moving but that required pontoon bridges six of them in all and you can see three of them here uh, there were two on the north side of town one on the south side of town three more on the the left side of the army they didn't arrive until 10 days after the army did and that was because general halleck who was the commander-in-chief uh, of union forces didn't even submit the order for the pontoon bridges until the day that the Union 2nd Corps started arriving over here at Stafford Heights. And by that point, well, the element of surprise had been lost. So when they did finally cross, it was under fire like this. And it was Barksdale's Brigade, along with some Floridians. The uh, 8th Florida, I think, was over here who opposed the crossing. And what ended up happening was the Union started putting down the pontoon bridges at about 2 in the morning on the morning of the 11th. They got about halfway by 5 in the morning, and that's when the fog lifted, that's when the sun came up, and that's when Barksdale's man, men started firing on the engineers. The engineers ran. The guns opened up on the town. At one point, they were firing as many as 100 shells a minute into the town of Fredericksburg. Most of the civilians had evacuated a couple of weeks earlier. So there weren't too many. Oh, we just lost our commanding officer there. I probably should have waited until I had more men. Um, so what ended up happening was the 7th Michigan and the 19th Massachusetts jumped into some boats. Michigan men went first. Jumped into some boats, rowed across, and started fighting street to street. And started pushing the Mississippians and Floridians back. And that's when they were able to finish the bridges. But it took a better part of the day to do that. It's been a while since I've played this game. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Man, look at how many of the men we lost. I think we're going to get some reinforcements at some point. We're probably going to need them. There was a Harvard regiment, it was called. It was the 20th Massachusetts, and they were supposed to be the first ones across. Look at Barksdale coming across on our side. Making our job easier. In the 20th Massachusetts, there was a captain whose best friend was a lieutenant in one of the Mississippi regiments. I think the 21st Mississippi, which was covering Barksdale's withdrawal as he pulled out of town. They had been best friends at Harvard. And when the Mississippi captain, or a lieutenant, um, 
heard that he was facing his best friend's troops, he, uh, one man said that he just completely lost his mind and he ordered his men to attack and charge into the Union uh, men, even though he had been ordered by his commanding officer to withdraw through the town. He ended up being arrested at the end of the, the battle that night for insubordination because he just kind of rage quit on his commander and it just decided to attack. I don't know what Barksdale is doing there. That's crazy. We're going to end up completely eliminating him. And now we're going to send some more men over. I'm going to keep Palmer and uh, Owen over here to go after Barksdale. Alright, I think we've completed the, the crossing part of things. Gotta wipe out these skirmishers now. Oh, Barksdale snuck back across over here on this pond. He used our pontoon bridge to get across. That's awesome. So the bridges across the Rappahannock had been destroyed back in the spring and summer of 1862. What's kind of interesting is there's a modern bridge here that was actually that's being replaced right now. So it actually looks just like this right now when you go to Fredericksburg. Norman Hall's brigade was actually the first one to cross into Fredericksburg that day. Oh boy, getting flanked here. But so is Barksdale. Oh, come on. I wanted to keep going. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so here we go. So let's talk about what happened historically. And we're not even dealing with the full force here. We've only got 73,000. Oh, that's the Confederates have 73,000. We've got 115,000. Uh, so Barksdale, all right, Barksdale, Burnside divided his army into three grand divisions. It was kind of a new thing that he was doing. Uh, you had the right grand division uh, that was under Sumner that was supposed to attack up Marie's Heights. You had the center grand division under Hooker. And then you had the uh, left grand division under uh, Franklin. And what he ordered them to do was that there would be simultaneous attacks by Sumner here and Franklin here. This was supposed to be the main attack. The idea was hit Stonewall Jackson on the right, where he was not as strong as Long Longstreet was on the left. Roll them up this way, get between Lee's army and Richmond, but also outflank uh, Marie's Heights. And so in order to do that, they had to keep up the pressure on Marie's Heights. But what happened was they met the night before. They talked about that plan. And then Burnside told his commanders that he would send them written confirmation of the orders. And they were supposed to attack at dawn, like around 5 in the morning. Well, 5 in the morning comes around, no orders. It's 7.30 before uh, a brigadier general on Burnside's staff arrives at General Franklin's headquarters, which is down here. And this, this battlefield is like seven miles long. You can't see any of this from over here at all. So there was no way of knowing what was happening on one end of the battlefield from the other. And so when Franklin finally receives his orders, the orders basically say, attack with at least one division, blah, blah, blah. It, it sounds nothing like what Burnside told him to do. And so he only attacks with one division, and that's Meade's division in, uh, in uh, the First Corps under Reynolds with a couple of divisions in support, far fewer than what he needed. And meanwhile, the attack on Maurice Heights is going, 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 because they think they've got to keep the pressure up to allow time for Franklin to win the battle on this side. But they had no idea that Franklin wasn't trying to win the battle on this side. He thought he was the diversion at that point. It was just a mess of miscommunication, and it cost the Union the battle. So left grand division commanded by Ge Major General William B. Franklin in consisting of two full corps ready to advance. Nearly 45,000 soldiers are at your disposal. 
Concentrate your forces to attack Prospect Hill. Watch out for Rebel Cavalry masking their right side. Yeah, so Prospect Hill, Meade breaks through. His division breaks through, but they're unsupported. They had a little bit of help from Gibbon on this side. Double Day was basically pinned down by Pelham's gun uh, over on this side. I think Pelham was down here. And uh, basically did nothing. And so Meade eventually had to fall back because he just was unsupported in his attack. So basically what my plan's going to be is I'm going to do what Franklin should have done on this side, which is to attack with more than just those few troops. Uh, so let's take a look and see. I want to see where we're at. I want to try and find Meade's division. I think that uh, I think this is Gibbon here. Magleton's part of Meade's division. That's the first division, yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull Meade's division out. And we're going to lead the attack with them. And I want to try and do this largely where they really attacked. The Confederates left a gap in the center of their line because Jackson and Lee agreed it was too marshy, it was too swampy, they'd never attack through there. And that's exactly where Meade hit. Uh, and they had Maxie Gregg's division or brigade back here in reserve in case somebody came through in that gap because Archer and Lane, who had the lead brigades up here, were really uh, not happy about the, the gap in their line. So we're going to go ahead and push forward with as much as we can. Oh, man, i got to remember how to do this. It's been so long since I played this game. All right. And the third division, that must be, that's Double Day's division. Because there's the Iron Brigade right there. So we're going to send them down this way, which is where they were historically. I'm going to largely follow the historical path of these units. But I'm going to support the attack, which is something the Union did not do. We're going to send some of the 6th Corps in as well. Oh, that's 1st Corps. I didn't mean to do that. Six Corps. Here we go. Now, I will say this. I don't like that it starts it at 1.30 in the afternoon, which I know historically is about when the Union finally attacked. But this attack was supposed to go off at 5 a.m. And by 8.30 or 9, Meade's division was moving across this field. Uh, they got pinned down by artillery for a while, but uh, by 1.30, they were well underway in their attack. So I'm waiting for the supporting units to get up closer before I move in. I'm going to move Double Day right up to the water here. This is tough ground to cross. In a span of something like 20 minutes, all three of Meade's brigade commanders went down. I think one of them, I want to say Jackson, was killed with a shot to the head. Magleton got trapped under his horse for like a half hour because his horse got shot. Here comes that artillery. There was a ton of artillery in the Confederate position. I uh, got to tour all of that. And they had entrenchments all the way along this back line right here. They had built a road uh, in behind their lines. Uh, it was entrenched all the way. It, there were guns up here on Prospect Hill that were firing constantly. So there's Greg, which is interesting because he was historically way back here. He was killed in this battle. He was uh, shot through the spine and paralyzed. Died a couple of days later. Dang, Magleton already got routed. have to get in, into these woods and out of the fire of all this artillery. I'm going to shift a couple of Double Day's brigades over this way. 
The Union only historically attacked with about 8,000 men on this side, and they actually broke through the Confederate lines with only 8,000 men. So it feels a little unrealistic that I'm getting thrown back when I'm attacking with so many more. But I get that they're trying to make it competitive. Jeez. Already way different than the historic battle. Stuart's cavalry is over here, so I have to be careful. That's why I'm keeping those brigades there to guard against that. Send Rogers down. Oh, Phelps, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, we got you now, Lane. Torbert needs to hold up right there. Right, we're going to charge into these fortifications and try to drive Thomas off. Do the same with Dorsey Pender over here if I can. Oh boy. Three brigades. Man, I forgot how aggressive he could be on this game. another brigade up over here. Alright, we drove Thomas off. My goodness, this is crazy. This is so much bloodier than the real battle was. In all, on this side of the battlefield, the Union lost 5,000 men, the Confederates lost 4,000. We're already at that number, and we're just getting started. All right, Russell, come back down. Bring up the Iron Brigade, start firing into Atkinson's flank. I'm 
Magleton's gonna get thrown back again. Come on, Torbert, you get up. Speed the time up a little bit here. Oh, are you kidding me? Pender's gonna reoccupy those fortifications. That's what I thought. I don't think so. Oh, Torbert. Jeez. Dismount this calf and use them to help out. Here goes Pender again trying to occupy these fortifications. Goodness. So we've lost almost 7,000 men already. 4,500 for him. This is going to be bloodier than Marie's Heights was. Elisha Paxton. So he's the great great grandfather of Bill Paxton, the actor. Paxton was killed at, I want to say Spotsylvania. And of course, Meade, I've been talking about this on the other channel. General Meade is the great 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 grandfather of, Athu, of actor Matthew Fox, who was in uh, We Are Marshall, he was in Lost, and the movie The Emperor. Only got a minute and 12 or an hour and 12 to take prospect hill i don't think that's happening it was a lot easier for me in real life than it's been for me so far Stonewall Jackson riding up to the front. Let's come up and start resupplying some folks. Started out with 7,000 more men than him. We're down to 5,000 more men than him. The morale and condition is pretty bad over here. Ammo's coming, guys. Wow, Conrad Jackson was killed. I think he was killed in real life in this battle.
Well, what I've learned is I can't do what historically the Union did because the Confederacy is not doing what historically the Confederacy did, so... I should have probably come up with a different strategy. Go get that battery if we can. Jeez. Or at least we're getting all our artillery. Look at all the... My goodness, look at all the craters from the artillery. Oh, now we switch over to Maurice Heights. Okay, here we go. This was only supposed to be the attack that was supposed to hold them in place. So we are not going to waste our army hurling it at Marie's Heights. So Marie's Heights has this canal thing going on. Um, right now, if you visit there today, the town comes all the way up to like right here. I mean, it's just like just short of the stone wall. This part, the stone wall here is the only part of the battlefield that is preserved. And then right behind it is the... National Cemetery is up on top of the hill. The Confederate Cemetery is down in town further, down by the high school. But yeah, they had to cross this canal and then come at this stone wall, and it was just such a brutally strong defensive position. And there's really nowhere good to come at him over here, but I'm going to try this side. There's the Irish Brigade. I'm going to start shifting everybody down this way. I think Stockton, I want to say that is the brigade that includes the 20th Main. I'm going to send up everybody up, up this one side over here. Historically, they all kind of went right at this position right here. But these guys are so spread out, I think I think I can break through him right there. It's just going to take a while to get get all the forces I need to make it happen. You can see how strong his defensive position is. I lost 200 men and he lost like six. That's crazy. It should not be that strong of a defensive position. can't imagine anybody who can do that well in hand-to-hand -hand combat just because they're behind a stone wall. Oh well. I shouldn't expect it to be easy.
get all my artillery. I should have had all my artillery hitting that position first before I tried to attack. Alright, not yet, not yet. Hold up right here, guys. Now we're going to start moving some units into position. Get as much artillery shelling him as I can. All of that and we've only inflicted 65 casualties on those men there. All right, go. Dang. Everybody hit him. All right, and let's start sending another wave. Unreal. There we go. We got him. Only took 20,000 men. Now let's turn on Kershaw. Beautiful. Now we're in business.
pause for a second. All right. Interesting what a different story it is on Marie's Heights compared to how things were going on the left flank. Cobb just charged down the hill into us. Cobb was the guy who historically was holding the center of the line of the stone wall. Cobb was killed in this battle. Um, artillery shell hit a hit a house and exploded and sent shrapnel into his leg and uh, or his hip and uh, severed his femoral artery. Union secured Maurice Heights. We gotta hit this artillery. Oh, why is it our artillery moving up? That's not a good idea. Forgot how much I missed the town the sound of kill them all in the background over and over again. Nine more minutes and we'll have officially secured Marie's Heights. Oh boy, didn't mean to send Zook in there, but that works. Continue attacking or withdraw? Well, General Army has already paid a heavy toll attacking those hills, but we can still claim victory. Maurice Heights could be captured if we attack decisively. It already has been. Telegraph Road might be weakened now. If rebels have to reinfor reinforce their flanks, the rest of our forces are currently engaged at Prospect Hill and will be later available to join an attack on their center. So, this is where Lee had his headquarters, was up in here. And he could actually see, at the time, the whole battlefield. Now if you go there, it's all covered in woods. You can't see much at all. Uh, but this is where Lee and Longstreet were almost killed during the battle. Um, there was an exploding 30-pound parrot. On its 39th round, it fired and exploded and uh, very nearly killed both of them. And then later on, a shell landed right near Lee, but it was a dud and didn't explode. So it could have been a disaster for the Confederates. So now we're basically looking at everything except for the left flank we're gonna finish off the confederates here i've got more than enough to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and start turning some of these units over this direction i'm gonna bring the guns up go ahead and focus on the other side
We'll send enough units to d deal decisively with the Confederates up here. Send some more units up here just to have some reserves. Let's finish off Cobb, shall we? Oh boy, that didn't work out so well. artillery up here still. I think that's my problem right now. We need to bring our own artillery over here and deal with that. Big brigade coming in on this side. Switzer, get up there. So we're finally starting to get some artillery support going here. So we can deal with these batteries. Still, with 500 men charging into us, that'll pretty much be the end of him. Bye bye, Barksdale. Captured him. Beautiful. That's what you get for holding up our crossing. counter battery fire going here. Actually, let's go after Alexander. He's got a big battery. All right, we got to press this attack. Oh, 
Oh, what's going on down here? Oh, the Confederates got reinforcements. Doesn't look like that's working out so well for them. And we got these guys here. Let's bring them forward. Finish off that battery. One volley should finish that battery off. Almost. Not quite enough. things down here. I think we're good. In fact, I think we could probably... I can't quite see down there because it's in the corner. But I think we could probably charge in and finish these guys off. Dealing with Pickett's division here. Oh, Robinson, what were you doing? Now we've got some serious firepower with our guns. But we've got an hour and a half left. We've got to get to Telegraph Hill or Telegraph Road if we want to win this battle here. Otherwise, we'll have to go back to the other side, I think. What's happening down here? And we're still fighting. Oh, we got him to surrender. Okay, perfect. Send him off the field. How many men's he got left? He's got 22,000 left on this part of the field. We've taken out half his guns. firing on these batteries now we're gonna f finish wiping off these guns and then we can take out what's left of the infantry Stonewall Jackson and his division are reinforcing their center. Well, that's great. I 
if we can grab these supplies. Tell them not to fire, but just go grab those. Man, these casualties have been brutal. Eight minutes to go. Don't think we're going to win the battle here. Not yet. You still got 21,000 men and 60 guns. Take the guns. I don't care how many men it costs. Finish off Kershaw, finish off those batteries. here we haven't even used. Get these guns firing into these guys. There's no friendly fire in this game, so no reason not to do that. And we took another Confederate brigade out of the action. Only 25 minutes left, though. It's down to just 16,000 men and 31 guns here. What I need to do now, if I remember right, anybody who's on this side of the river, I'll still have for the next part of the fight. Whereas anybody that's up here fighting on Marie's Heights, I'm going to lose. We just got Richard Garnett to surrender. Well, at least he won't die at Gettysburg now. Man, we're going to come so close to grabbing this objective. Got a Vander Law right there trying to get in my way. I'm gonna try to send some units down here. I don't know if it's too late or not. Let's see, 
see if we can run up there and grab that in the eight minutes we have left. I doubt it because some of these units are just going to get flanked by law. I just didn't move on it fast enough. Oh, and Jones is there too. Yeah, I don't think this is happening. Run, Cake, run! Get there, buddy. Ah, the fight continues on the right. Okay. Now it opens up on the right. We just need to, um, let's see. We need to hold Telegraph Road, and we win. Or, hold Prospect Hill. So we just need to take one of. It seems like this is the easier of the two, for sure. There's Stonewall Jackson trying to defend it. We didn't get all the guns moved south like I was hoping. That's okay. We'll go after Deering's guns. As far as down here in the south goes, we just gotta kinda hang on. Whoa, what's going on here? We're going to have a problem on our hands with Evander Law. Stoneman's Third Corps is available to participate in the fight. Thank you. Fire. Jones is going to cease to exist here in a minute. Butterfield's Fifth Corps ready to storm their center. March south. Jones is going to cease to exist here. There goes Jones. I thought he'd just get wiped out, but he surrendered. We do have a bunch of units arriving to help out. Dan Butterfield, he's the man who composed TAPS. Benning surrendered and then he unsurrendered. Got some cavalry back here. I don't think you got anywhere to go, buddy. Armistead surrendered. Well, now he'll survive Gettysburg as well. Benning surrendered. Anderson surrendered. That's really pretty much all the opposition we have to face. But boy, at what cost. Man, 
All the craters here is just insane. I think that's pretty well going to do it, though. Oh, we're about to hit the end of the battle here, and we're still dealing with a furious counterattack from some of Jackson's men. He's only got 11,000 left. But boy, the casualties are just going to be absurd for this battle for one day. Bloodiest one day uh, of the war, of course, was Antietam. So we'll see how that compares. I'm sure it's going to be far worse. These are going to be like Gettysburg-type numbers. All right, victory. Let's take a look at... Well, John Robinson got promoted to Major General. Hiram Barry did as well. Magleton and Jackson were killed. Calvin Pratt promoted to Major General. David Russell, Rastus Tyler, Nathan Kimball. Interesting. Um, here's the numbers. So casualties, 41,000 for me, 39,000 for the Confederates, plus the cavalry, the guns, the missing. So it was worse than Gettysburg. It was far worse than Gettysburg. Each side almost had Gettysburg combined numbers of their own. But that was a fun throwback. It was nice to go back and revisit a little bit of Ultimate General Civil War. It's a game I played so many th hundreds and actually thousands of hours so hopefully you enjoyed that maybe we'll do it again sometime just for old time's sake we're going to get back into the sw swing of things with all of my regular uh regular series that i do plus we have a new one that's going to be starting soon so thanks for watching guys we'll see you again soon